Hey, and welcome to another episode of Save the Track Bike, presented by The Bicycle Broker. Uh, my name is Esther Walker. Um, I'm a rider with the Event and Factory team, and also ride road for the San Diego Bicycle Club. So how did you get into cycling? I got into cycling, actually by way of triathlon, by way of running. So I was originally a runner, um, and then I kept getting injured. I took a little bit of time off, off of that. And then when I moved down to San Diego, I guess that must have been around 2010, um, I didn't do anything for a couple of years. I was really focused on grad school. And then just kind of being in San Diego, everyone's active all the time. So I was, you know, got back into running kept getting injured again and then finally one of my friends is like you know you just need to try uh biking and you try triathlon so I did that for a couple years had a lot of fun and then I realized that really biking was what I was best at and that's really what I enjoyed so I made the full conversion and haven't looked back since nice what do you think uh what do you think it was about bicycles compared to the running and swimming that really attracted you to it well, I think just at least in, in triathlon, it was fun uh, for a while. I, I do really like structure, but then basically kind of the, the two-day two, two day workouts and really I wasn't really naturally a good swimmer. So basically if I didn't swim every day, I wasn't really improving. Um, and then cycling just, you know, it felt it felt good. I could cover a lot of ground. Um, I could see a lot of new things. I really loved the track. Actually, that was one of my kind of first introductions to to cycling in San Diego. Um, And it was just kind of a feeling that, you know, the other two sports didn't quite have. And on top of that, I felt like I was getting better at it more quickly. And that's, of course, always a a good motivator. So I just really kept kind of pursuing it as much as I could. Absolutely. It's always that, like, feeling when you really feel the tangible benefits, especially at the beginning. I feel like cycling definitely gives you that because exactly, I, yeah. I think so much of cycling a lot of times is very mental mm-hmm. so so it's like the first time you go like 10 miles you're like whoa i rode 10 miles and then all of a sudden you're riding like 60 miles and it doesn't seem like that big of a deal anymore <laughs> exactly yeah when people hear like you just even read like 20 miles people who don't cycle very much think that's you know a crazy amount of distance and I think I probably did it first too, but then it just kind of, you know, once you get into the pattern and it just be kind of, kind of becomes a, a rhythm, it, it doesn't feel like much time at all. Absolutely. I remember the first time I rode like 40 miles, it seemed like I was like Superman or something. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> um, so I'm curious how triathlons and cycling and track kind of transferred over to getting interested in fixed gear crits yeah so kind of at the i guess tail end of my time in triathlon um, i had met with the the local college i was going to ucsd for grad school and the cycling team actually was looking for people to start doing more track training on the villadrome uh, because they wanted to send a team to nationals um, and so they kind of poached a few of the, the triathletes um, has trained kind of pretty consistently on the track. And it was just such a good group of people that, you know, the track quickly became the place where I just loved to spend a lot of my time. Um, and then, of course, with that, the more time you spend there, the better you get. So, so I quickly was, you know, stopping racing triathlons and starting to race the local track series every weekend. Um, through that, I met Sean Burke, who's the director of the Fenton Factory team, uh, and his wife, Elaine. And Elaine basically ran a lot of the women's programs early on at the track, um, was really kind of instrumental in getting a lot of more women involved in track racing. Um, and it was kind of through my interactions with her that I, I met Sean, and he kind of introduced me to this idea of fixed gear racing. Um, and it was very early on. That was, I guess, the first year of the event and factory team. Um, I didn't quite know anything about crit racing yet. I didn't know much about fixed gear. Um, but he said, you know, we're building a, a team. We want both a men's team and a women's team. You've been at this track consistently. We just, just give it a shot and see what happens. Um, and just from then, I really loved 
the people. I've loved kind of the environment that those races always promote um, and really haven't looked back. When was that? That would have been, I guess, in, might have been like 2014 or 2015. 20, let me think, 2014. Yeah, probably 2015. Nice. Mm -hmm. So what was that first experience like um, doing your first fixed gear crit and which one was it? Yeah, I'm trying to remember now what my very first fixed gear crit was. I think I think it might have been one of the local, this is when Wolfpack Hustle was still happening in LA. I think it might have been either the, the short line crit in Long Beach or the Civic Center crit in LA. Um, and it was really kind of nerve wracking. Like I, I hadn't, I'd ridden obviously a bit at the track and I had done a little bit of road trips, but it was just a completely new feeling. Um, luckily then those, those crits were super wide and I was able to kind of, you know, work through it, but I just remember being really nervous about it. And, you know, I had great te teammates, like I think back in that original crew, we had, of course, we still had Kim, Kim on stop. We had, I think Jen Whalen was there. I had my road, road teammate, uh, Trina, um, and my friend Gretchen and, you know, they kind of, we all kind of worked together to get through that. And then from then it's just been kind of, you know, a lot of face here racing is, just comes with experience. You kind of learn kind of some nuances that don't quite work on the track. They don't quite work in road racing. And that really only kind of, you can learn about through actually racing a fixed year crit. So that first year I was definitely learning a lot. And since then I kind of just, you know, learn how to handle myself in, in these situations. For sure. When was your first red hook experience and what was that like? My first Red Hook experience was, it would have been that year, um, I wasn't able to go to Brooklyn. Actually, I was still transitioning out of triathlon, so I think at that same weekend we had triathlon nationals. Um, and then a few months later, my first one would have been uh, Red Hook London. And that was the first time that they were hosting in London, so there was still kind of a lot of unknowns. And I just remember it being like a completely unreal experience, like just the the amount of people there, the the, narrow, the narrowness of the course and the technicality of the course was something I hadn't yet experienced in kurt racing. And I just, I remember that race like like no other race. Like I just remember the gun going off. I think there was a crash in the first corner that had split the field. And then I think I spent the entire race chasing. I eventually found my teammate Kim and I think we worked together to the end just kind of riding with each other so it was really quite the experience and since then even though I was slightly terrified um I always kind of had that feeling like I always wanted to go back to Red Hook it's just really a race experience that you can't forget yeah you did both Red Hooks this year right yes second year in a row am I right that the women's team won the overall team standings Yes. Yeah. So we've always had a great group of women, which is something I've actually really appreciated about our, our team is that they spend a lot of time, you know, thinking about the men's team, but also really thinking about how to field a strong and competitive women's team. Um, and so that's something I've really valued is kind of the the care and the effort that they put in both the men's and the, the women's side of the team. Um, and it's actually the third time that we've won the team championships. So actually my first year, um, on the team, we also won it. And then we took a year off and then we won it the past few years as well. So that's been pretty exciting. What other uh, races did you do this year? So I know we had you on for the first SoCal Crit Series race. Yeah, so I did a couple of the SoCal Fix Series. They had three in the series. I really wanted to make it to all three, but I just couldn't make the last one happen. Um, and this year has been interesting because um, because the two other European Red Hooks were canceled, we spent a lot more time thinking about the domestic races that we were going to do, which normally we don't get as much of a chance to attend. So in a sense, it's been kind of cool, you know, even with the cancellation of Barcelona and London, we got to see a lot more kind of of the U.S. Uh, based races. And so beyond the SoCal Fix series, we also did the, the Mission Crit, uh, the Bone Machine Crit. Um, and then my team was also sent over to um, the tour of the Dairyland and the fixation crits in Denver and Chicago, which I couldn't make. Nice. Yeah. So. Oh, and then I forgot one. We also just came back from Red Bull Last Stand. 
Oh, oh we yeah. just did that this last weekend, so that let's, was also really Let's fun. talk about Red Bull Last Stand, because that seems like such a rad race, and I really wanted to go this year, but my whole summer got screwed up, so I pretty much didn't get to go to anything. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, Red Bull is always interesting. That was my third year at that race. I've kind of gone to it every year since it began, and I feel like every year it's getting a little more organized. I felt like the first year it was a little kind of all over the place. They were still figuring out exactly how they want to run it. But by this year, I felt like it was a lot um, a lot smoother. Uh, and it's a fun race because it combines some elements of the track, so kind of the elimination style. So every lap someone gets eliminated uh, with the six-year crit. So you still have kind of the, the crit circuit, you're still on your track bike, and you're still kind of railing through those corners and navigating them the best you can while still pedaling. Yeah, so how did you do this year? What did the race look like and and what was the course like? Yeah, so the course, it actually goes right around the Alamo, which is really cool. Um, every time I go there, the, there, though, I forget how small the Alamo actually is, but yeah. <laughs> it's still really neat to be able to, like, you know, race around such a historic site Mm -hmm. um and the race so it was me and my teammate eleanor from france and then i actually met um another girl named danny morrishead while i was in milan for red hook and she had mentioned offhand that you know she had been you know interested in going to red bull but didn't have a bike she was there kind of guest riding with the team so i threw out the idea i said hey why don't you come with us i have my bike from last year we can fit you on it and you'll be good to go so on a whim, she did. She got back from Milan. She bought her ticket, and two days later, she was out in Texas. Um, and I'm really happy she did. She's a uh, young and up-and-coming rider, and in the end, she won, which was super exciting. And, of course, we were happy to have a, a win for event in. Um, and so, basically, the race, it's elimination style. Uh, the two big teams there were us and the uh, Hey LA Mayor team. Um, and basically, our plan was to get someone at some point off the front we didn't care who it could have been me it could have been danny it could have been eleanor and basically make uh the others work for it because every lap you also have this added element of uh, a sprint each lap to make sure the person in the back you know you don't want to be the one getting eliminated so i'd say about maybe five to ten laps in danny attacked um nobody chased her right away except um eleanor who was guest riding with hale Eleanor and I went to the front, kind of patrolled, um, tried to keep the pace at a reasonable speed, but fast enough that people didn't really want to attack. Uh, Eventually, Evelyn kind of dropped back in and Danny was off the front. So from that point, it was basically Eleanor and I patrolling the front, making sure we stayed long enough to protect Danny. Uh, And in the end, it worked. Uh, Danny was able to take the wind. Um, It came down to Danny, me and Ash. Ash out sprinted me. I'm not much of a sprinter, so I ended up in third and Eleanor in fifth. So overall, it was a really good day for the team. I want to talk a little bit, too, about uh, Aventon. They just seem like like your experience on the team, and it just seems like such a rad company. They, they make such affordable bikes that mm-hmm. seem to perform really, really well, and and it's always really noticeable, like, how strong the team is and i think that that's i think that really stands out to me (laughs) yeah i mean i think you know a lot of credit here goes to obviously event and and um but also to sean burt who's our team director and he you know he spends a lot of time thinking about you know who's going to be a good fit for the team not only kind of performance wise but one thing i really enjoyed about the team is that everyone seems to get along and everyone is happy to work together as a team, which I don't think you you often get when you kind of pick people from all, all over the world to throw together to race bikes together. So that's kind of a cool aspect of it. And then beyond that, I mean, I think what's interesting is that anytime you, you get into cycling, and I faced this when I started too, when I was still a student, is that cycling can be really kind of an inaccessible sport for a lot of people. It's really expensive. The bikes can range from, you know, on the low end, maybe in track cycling, we're kind of on the lower end with event and maybe spending around $500 for a bike, but it escalates from there really quickly. Mm-hmm. And one thing I really like about racing is that we're riding on the same, excuse me, the same bikes that, you know, somebody can order online. 
um, and just racing the heck out of them and really, in a sense, stress testing them. And every year we we got a kind of a new bike and really got to see the evolution of what Eventon produces. And I like to think that, you know, re- we really get to kind of put each of these bikes through their ultimate stress tre- stress tests, sorry, stress <laughs> tests, um, racing them in red hooks, you know, involving them in crashes and things like that. Um, but at the same time, these bikes being really accessible. And so I think, you know, that's really cool to just be part of a company that's, you know, accessible to more people and really kind of show that you don't have to have a $10,000 bike to race, you know, at, at Red Hook or even at the track. I raced nationals, the USA Elite Nationals this year on my event in track bike. So, of course, I got a couple of funny looks, but, you know, for me, it's what I'm comfortable on and I've and had no issues with them so far. So, you know, it's that's kind of a really cool part of being a part of this team and working with this company as well. Yeah, that's always, uh, I know they had a story too about some guy that won, I don't remember exactly what title it was, but on the uh, Cordoba, which is, you know, $270 frame set. Exactly, yeah. which, Which is really rad because it's, that's the one thing that I love about fixed gear so much is that it does make cycling a little more accessible. Like mm-hmm. for me, I don't know if I would have ever, I don't know. I grew up racing BMX, but I don't know if I would have ever like continued getting into cycling into my adult years until I got into fixed gear bikes. <laughs> and yeah, it's just cool to see companies like Aventon doing that. And plus the Maturo, is that how you say it? Mataro? That could be it. Yeah, we say Mataro, but maybe we're pronouncing it wrong. No, I think it's the Mataro. Yeah, I'll mm-hmm. go with your your <laughs> your pronunciation. I mean, the bike's beautiful too. It's like it just has such a nice design, and and yeah, you guys are out there killing it on it. Yeah, I mean, it's been really cool to see kind of each year the the development of their bikes. Like my very first track bike before I was even on the team was actually. Uh, the first version of the Mataro. Um, and that was just because Event had, had a deal with their velodrome to try to get more women into cycling. Um, and so that's kind of how I ended up with that bike. And then, you know, half a year later, I was riding on the team with them and, you know, have since gone through kind of the Mataro, the Cordoba, the Diamond, and, you know, back now we're back to another version of the Mataro. So it's been really cool to kind of see what they come up with each year and then also kind of seeing people just day to day on the street riding them and say, Hey, like, no, that's my same bike. So I kind of want to get your take on some of your favorite experiences from this season. Cause right now we're in the fall, you know, fixed gear season is kind of, you know, over. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of want to get your take on your experience this season and your favorite races, maybe some of your favorite stories. Yeah. yeah I mean, this season, like, Every year I ride um, kind of on the, the fixed gear circuit with the event, and it's, it's an incredible experience. Like, you know, being able to travel the world with people you get along with and kind of attending these really exciting bike events is, you know, there's just nothing that compares. And I think really what makes that on top of it is kind of having great teammates, both on the men's side and the women's side. Like, everyone's really willing to help each other um, and really is supportive. And so, you know, on um, just kind of contributing to that overall experience. I really have to thank, you know, Kim and Lisa and Eleanor for really all their support on the team this year. Um, and kind of leading into those stories, I would say like probably the teammate I worked the most with this year was Kim nonstop. So she was there at every SoCal six series. Um, she definitely supported me in every race. She uh, played a huge role in helping me win both bone machine and mission crit. And so really kind of, you know, it's just really cool to see is how the teams kind of come together to, you know, support other uh, kind of results for the team. And that's kind of, I think, one of my most memorable experiences uh, this season has got to be Mission Crit. Like I, I went there on a whim. I, you know, I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to race it or not. It was my first fixed year crit of the season. Um, and I got there. I had to start very last in the qualifying grid uh, because I registered last, um, made it to the finals. And then in the finals, you know, basically it was a hard, fast race. Um, there were, I think there might have been around 50 girls or so. And I had, you know, no thoughts of even, you know, 
the possibility of winning this thing. There's always girls that I see that I think are stronger, but, you know, I thought I'd give it my best. And especially when I thought coming down to a field sprint, typically if it's not a breakaway and I'm not off the front, there's no hope for me. Um, and as we were kind of winding down the last few laps, um, I don't remember what I said or if I said anything, but Kim just went to the front and kept it fast. And if anything, that's kind of what helps me most to kind of make sure people are breathing hard and basically wearing people out all the way to the end. So I at least have a fighting chance in the sprint. And she did exactly that. She went to the front, railed what she could. And then going into the last lap, I just took over and I raced as fast as I could. I don't think I've ever heard, even in a red hook, the amount of noise that, you know, just <laughs> from the crowd cheering that I've ever had heard in that last lap of Mission Crit. And I just powered myself to line and came across first. And it was really kind of a my first, I'd say, big uh, fixed year crit win. And, you know, really that came through that support of that crowd and, and through, through Kim. So I'd say that was probably one of my most memorable experiences this season. So, yeah, even watching that at home on the live stream was incredibly exciting. That, that looked like a really fun race. I wish I could have been there. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was cool, and you know, up until then, I think a lot of the fixed gear races, at least on the West Coast, had been pretty small. So it was cool to see, kind of just at least on the women's side, the the amount of talent that showed up for the women's race, and I think a lot of that came through kind of support from, I believe, Machines for Freedom. They uh -huh. kind of sat up and said, "Hey, any women who want to race, we're going to cover your reds." Um, and I think that really helped kind of boost those numbers. And it was exciting to have a, a good solid field for one of those West Coast crits. Yeah. I've had the mission crit folks on the podcast a couple of times and they're just such rad people. And I feel like they're just doing it right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was, it was a great experience and uh, a super fun course. So definitely something I'd be interested in racing again. I'm curious to get, if you have any bucket list races that you've seen that, you know, maybe on social media or something like that. Like, I don't know, fixed 42 or like. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I get major, you know, FOMO when I start seeing all the, the, the races we usually race against in Europe when we start seeing them kind of posting all of their European races for the season. So uh, the rad race that I've seen kind of going on in Europe with the kind of road race and kind of elimination has been really cool to follow it's something i've always wanted to race um another one i've also been really interested in racing is king of tracks um in korea i've just never been able to get myself over there in time but it's definitely something i always see a lot of kind of buzz on social media about and have always been curious uh to race and you're still racing track right you said yes <laughs> what are some of your favorite track events Ooh. Or what is your strength? What is your, like, when you go to the track, what is the most exciting yeah. for you? <laughs> yeah, so for me, I'm, I'm much more of an endurance racer. Like, I'm not a super solid sprinter. I, I mean, I can hold my own when I need to, but it's definitely not my preference. So on the track, I definitely prefer the longer events. I I do really like the Omnium. Uh, so that's kind of the, the four-race event uh, ending up in the finale for the points race. Uh, I, of course, love the points race, and I'd say my absolute favorite track race is the Madison. So that's the partner race, where you're basically kind of going full speed, going into the sprints, checking your partner in, and hoping for the best. Yeah, that looks horrifying. I have, I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really fun. I mean, there's a lot of mayhem, but at the same time, I feel like it kind of complements fixed gear crit racing in a bit, and that you really have to kind of think you know, three, four or five steps ahead and really know where you're going and being able to kind of plan your next move, uh, which I really kind of see as uh, a critical component of like Red Hook as well. Absolutely. Um, so are you thinking about 2019 yet or are you still kind of winding down? <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely still winding down at this point. It's been been a long season i've raced kind of a full road and track season with my road club and then kind of the fixed gear season kind of legs on into october into this last weekend so just now kind of finally getting to take my deep breath kind of reflect on the season and uh take a little bit of a break and uh before getting back into the swing of things 
Absolutely. So you do have a race coming up, you said? Oh, no. no. Oh, okay. I'm done with racing. <laughs> racing for now. But <laughs> just, yeah, uh, our last race was last weekend and at Red Bull. So after that, that kind of marks the end of the season for me. And, you know, I might dabble in a couple, like, you know, cyclocross races or local mountain bike events, but really not training much. So really those are kind of just to, you know, jolt me out of my you know, laziness of the off season. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, even in the off season, I still regularly ride mostly easy. I mean, it's still a major part of my life. I, you know, to beat most of the Southern California traffic, I make sure to you know, try to commute a couple times a week. Um, and it's a huge part of my social life. So even just, you know, going on coffee rides or easy training rides with friends, that's how I kind of, you know, catch up. But I also enjoy kind of the downtime of the season to kind of, you know, just, enjoy parts of life that you tend to neglect so you know friends you might not have seen as much during the race season you know spending time to make fun meals you know maybe doing some some pottery or playing music anything catching up on the hobbies that you maybe didn't have quite as much time to to deal with during the the full season so what's your mid-ride coffee order (laughs) (laughs) depends if it's kind of cool cappuccino if it's not iced coffee absolutely i'm definitely like a cold brew on stops during the summer for sure but yeah yeah in the winter gotta have the gotta have the cap gotta do it yep (laughs) it's it's just small enough and you know it's just the right it's just the right amount of milk that you're not gonna die five miles later absolutely so what was your soundtrack for training this summer as far as music goes or podcasts that you're listening to Actually, maybe I'm kind of old school this way, but I don't listen to music while riding. Um, if I'm on the road, I'm, I'm very much, you know, no nothing in my ears. Um, usually just kind of chatting or really focusing on the road ahead of me. And, you know, maybe that's why I, I tend to thrive so much in kind of the time trial situation. But, of course, if I'm on home, at home, on the trainer, on the rollers, I, you know, listen to anything that kind of Spotify recommends to me. I, I do a lot of their kind of, you know, student class recommendations, but, you know, just kind of keep the beat up. But basically I'll listen to anything as long as it's not super heavy death metal or really twangy pop country. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to those who like those songs. Oh, you're not like jamming the Garth Brooks on the trainer? Not, not, <laughs> not much, no. <laughs> do you have any like adventures that you want to do or... Or, yeah, what is kind of driving you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's still a lot more I haven't really, you know, touched in the cycling world. I mean, I guess domestically, I really would like at some point to be able to go do, you know, some of the super well-known crit cert series. So, you know, like Tour of America Zurilands. I wasn't able, I haven't been able to make it out to that yet. That's something I'd really like to race. Um, Tulsa Tough is one that's also been on my radar and just, haven't been able to make it work out. So at least domestically, those are kind of two that I've always wanted to kind of uh, go for. And I guess, you know, in terms of, you know, bike adventures, I think just really, you know, maybe thanks to racing, racing has given this to me, but, you know, everywhere I travel now, I really want to have uh, a bike with me. And I think it's just a, a really cool way to see the world. So even if I'm not racing, just, you know, most place, places I go now, I have, I either rent a bike or take my bike with me and just kind of use that as a way to explore. So I'd say that's kind of one, one gift that exploration has racing has given to me. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we head off? I have so much gratitude for, you know, the Venton factory team and everything that they've been able to provide us as a team. I think we've had a lot of opportunity. We've had a lot of great sponsors. And again, a lot of this comes down to thanking Sean Burke for all of his organization over the past four years. And, and really, you know, four years ago, I couldn't imagine myself doing this. So really, it's been an incredible experience. And, you know, no matter what all of us are doing next year, you know, it's been uh, amazing to have have their support. Um, and I could say the exact same thing for my road team. I mean, I kind of helped direct the, the women's team for San Diego Bike Club. And they're the same thing. We've just been so lucky to have the, the support and the, the great people involved that it. It's really one thing that keeps me motivated to to ride my bike and to continue racing. So I feel like I've been really lucky in that regard. 
Do you want to shout out your social media or anything? Oh yeah, the social media bit. Tell people <laughs> where to find you. <laughs> I I I live probably on social media. Maybe <laughs> that's not as common these days in the fixed gear world. But you know, if you if you do want to find me, I'm on Instagram at ewalk four one seven. Um, it is private, but you know, if you if you love bikes and at least have some sort of connection to you, I'm happy to kind of uh, connect on there. <laughs> <laughs> and follow event and factory team of course event and factory team and our amazing wheels that we got to use this year that's Irwin, um roca we've had the awesome roca sunglasses that you know they've really spiraled out this year away from just producing wet suits to really kind of breaking into the sunglass world so it's been really cool to test those out and of course you can't forget our, our case so isaac who's on the team is a kind of co-founder of that and he also got Colin race for us later in the year and they've really been a huge proponent proponent of us saving so much money on bike fees this year so if you're looking for a, a good bike case for traveling that gets past those airport fees uh they're your answer and sorry one last one um uh we of course outfitted head to toe this year by Juro. so not only did they give us you know our helmets and shoes but they really designed awesome skin suits for us to wear all year long so it's been great to have them as a partner this year esther thank you so much for doing this yeah thank you for having me All right, that does it for another episode of Save the Track Bike. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to our sponsors, The Bicycle Broker, thebicyclebroker.com. The music is Slide Girl by Vitamin Pets. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.